the morning has come and it's time to break camp. We are leaving the border village and making our way back to Melbourne, albeit not in the most direct way. Last night it was beautiful. We had quite the gathering around our campfire. Most guests had brought their own wood as contribution to our fire that kept us all warm and cheerful. Quite a few characters with some amazing stories graced us with their presence. But none like John. John was one of the friendliest and most accommodating people we met on this trip. John is originally from England and he had made his way to Australia on a motorbike back in the 1970s on a Honda CB500. He travelled through Europe, the Stains, India and so forth until he made his way all the way to Australia. During his travels, he also met a gentleman by the name of Ted Simon, a name that would be very familiar to most adventure riders. For those that haven't had the privilege, he's the author of Jupiter's Travels, a book that has inspired hundreds of thousands of motorcycle riders with an adventurous spirit, including a well-known actor called Ewan McGregor, along with Charlie Berman, who co-created a series called The Long Way Around. Meeting John was a wonderful experience as hearing some of those stories from one of the pioneers of overland travel by means of motorcycle was awesome. So we're leaving Sejuna, heading towards Kimber Roadhouse today. Should be a beautiful uh, ride, the weather seems to be quite nice. Hope it stays this way. Had a terrible night's sleep last night. At best, I've got a couple of hours sleep in me. Luckily, the ride today is not a very long one. To get to Kimba Roadhouse, it's only about 312 kilometers from Sejuna. So, I'll be pitching my tent and uh, I'm uh, confident that I'll be sleeping a lot better than what I was yesterday. That uh, hotel room that we got. Enough winching though, still having an amazing time and we're only halfway through. a freezing night last night having said that in my sleeping bag I was toasty warm I took up my hand for literally for a couple of seconds just to grab my phone and check out what the time was and <laughs> I froze so yeah it was a uh, really cold really cold last night uh, according to the uh, DOM, it was uh, it felt like minus two. There was definitely ice on the bikes and on the tent this morning, uh, but we left uh, leaving pretty late. It's uh, almost uh, 20 past 10. Good thing is we're only going to Peterborough today, which is uh, approximately 286 kilometers, so it's not that far at all. Just waiting for Darren there, and I think he's good. So off we go.
Peterborough is the geographic heart of Australia and visitors arrive from four corners. The last report suggests that there are 1,490 people living in Peterborough. When in Peterborough, you must visit the Motorcycle Museum. This is really quite a remarkable museum for anyone with even a passing interest in motorcycles. We've just left Peterborough. It's uh, 7 degrees at the moment. The sun is out, so we're only 268 kilometers at the moment away from, uh, from Broken Hills. It's going to be another short day, which is uh, always welcome. So effectively, today is day 11, or day 12, actually. Mining has claimed more than 800 lives over the years at Broken Hill and the dramatic line of load, Miner's Memorial, overlooking the city is a moving monument to them all. If we learnt one thing on this trip, it's this. If you get to see a roadhouse with lots of trucks parked outside, make sure to stop. Odds are, the food is going to be great. Little Topper did not disappoint. So we're approximately half an hour out of Coba. It's uh, 10 past 4. And as we're driving by, there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, goats. Of course, as soon as you turn on the camera, they all disappear. The landscape has changed, the sun has started coming down, so we're anticipating a few roos on the side of the road. However, they're not as clever as the, the, the goats are. The goats, uh, once they see you or hear you, they usually move out of the way, whereas roos tend to, to run towards you. We finally make it to Coba. This has been a bucket list item for me for a while. I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody that's taken the time to subscribe to my channel. If you've enjoyed this series and you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. This is the Royal Hotel at Mount Hope. Darren finally gets to have his pizza. We just left uh, Hilston and uh, we've decided to hightail at home. For me, it's uh, closer to 600 kilometers, so it's gonna be a big day. I should be arriving at home just as the, the sun goes down. Surprise the family a little bit. They're all expecting me tomorrow. Initially, we were supposed to stay at Tockenwall. Uh, Greg, uh, one of um, Darren's best friends, was uh, gonna host us, but they had uh, forgotten all about it and uh, double booked something else. They still welcomed us to go and stay over there. Um, but we decided not to. Andy suggested we go to his place. They would have split the, the distances halfway. Would have worked out quite nicely. But we woke up uh, in the morning and we decided not. We we're going to hightail it from um, Hillston all the way to, um, to home. So we shave off a day from our trip. I go home and get to see my wife and kids a day earlier. And I'm really looking forward to that part. So far the trip has been uh, absolutely amazing. I've had a few hiccups with the motorbike. Nothing crazy. I did get an F1 uh, fault come up on a few occasions. But as soon as you turn off the key and back on again, uh, that fault disappears. When I get home, I'll put it in dealer mode and uh, work out what uh, the issue was. I don't know if you can tell straight ahead, uh, there seems to be a bit of weather coming our way. We are heading towards Melbourne, so we're expecting the temperature to drop a fair bit. We've been uh, 
averaging decent days but really really cold nights having said that the um, prognosis for tomorrow for today at uh, melbourne is uh, 13 degrees and rain so i've got my wet weather gear on in high anticipation Unfortunately, the last couple of hours of my trip are plagued by torrential rain and strong winds. Wearing a dark visor through these conditions, especially as it got a lot darker, was one of the silliest things I've done. There's not that much more footage of me getting home, as the camera gave out. I'd like to thank Darren, Amanda and Andy for making this trip memorable. Here's to the next one.